Excellent. What's up guys, today's video is gonna be about testing the new GTX 1060 just launched by Nvidia on a 21 by nine aspect ratio monitor. That's 21 by nine aspect ratio and the resolutions I'm gonna be testing are 3440 by 1440, which is the uh, native resolution of my Acer Predator X34 monitor back there. Also gonna be testing at 2560 by 1080 where you can find more affordable monitors at that lower resolution. But of course, these are all 21 by nine aspect ratio monitors, also known as ultra wide. And uh, a couple weeks ago, when the RX 480 from AMD launched, I did some testing with this card, specifically to see how it performs using these types of monitors. The reasons are, it's a pretty cool uh, monitor resolution and aspect ratio to game at, especially like a 34 inch, 3440 by 1440. But if you're looking for a wider, more immersive experience and you've considered doing multi-monitor configurations in the past, an ultra wide is definitely a great option because you don't have to spend the money on three monitors, you don't have to deal with bezels in between the monitors as you're setting them up. And especially if you get like a, a curved wraparound one you can sit kind of in the sweet spot with it and it's just a fantastic experience it's a little bit more immersive gives you a wider field of view which could even potentially give you an edge in some games but let's take a quick look at the wikipedia page on 21 by 9 aspect ratio this matches up also with cinemascope so if you're into watching cinemascope style movies um, if you have access to that it's another great reason to do that the anamorphic format of 2.39 to 1 and just to be very specific since we're dealing with aspect ratios and all also uh, fractions, which could be reduced. It's not actually 21 by nine, it's 21 and one third by nine. If it wasn't 21 and a third by nine, it would be seven by three, which doesn't roll off the tongue quite as easily. Anyway, here's a comparison. So four by three content natively looks like this. It's just a little bit wider than it is tall. If you move up to 16 by nine, it gets wider again, 16 units wide by nine units tall. And then 21 by nine is 21 units uh, wide by nine units tall. So you can see natively four by three looks like this. 16 by nine looks like this. 21 by nine looks like this. Let's look at some actual uh, monitors here. These are all listed on Newegg and being sold by Newegg. So you can tell 21 by nine monitors uh, actually have a pretty low uh, entry price too. So for a 25 inch one, you got an LG here for 150 bucks, 160 bucks, $190. Uh, pretty decent range, and then these of course scale up as the size goes up, 29 inch. Uh, you might also start to see some 3440 by 1440 monitors in there with the uh, 2560 by 1080. Anyway though, I will link this uh, search in the description if you guys want to check it out, as well as some more monitors available on uh, Amazon. The other thing you might consider if you're looking at a 21 by 9 monitor is getting a FreeSync or a G-Sync. Uh, option. I'm going to be using G-Sync back here, but the G-Sync monitors are a little bit more expensive. FreeSync, uh, 29 inch, uh, 21 by 9, you can get for as little as 300 to 350 dollars. And 2560 by 1080 at 29 inches uh, is a very good aspect ratio and size. If you jump up to 34 inch, you will find 2560 by 1080 as well as 3440 by 1440 monitors in there. Um, just bear in mind the 3440 by 1440 ones do cost quite a bit more. Uh, these are all FreeSync compatible. So again, if you're buying, you will need to use an AMD GPU for them to work properly with this. Uh, if you want G-Sync and this aspect ratio, it gets a bit more expensive. There's only 3440 by 1440 models available that I could see. My Acer Predator X34 is $1,200, which is pretty expensive. Hey, open box, you can get a little bit cheaper. But uh, if you want G-Sync and this uh, size and that aspect ratio, you kind of got to pay a little bit of extra cash. Anyway, the card I'm using though for today's benchmarks is the GeForce GTX 1060 G1 Gaming. Just launched and uh, it, it works pretty good. I'll show you more of that in just a second, but first let's take a closer look at the card. So the first thing you might notice is this is a pretty substantial card for a GTX 1060. It is long, it's about 11 inches long total, so make sure you have enough room in your case to fit the whole thing. Other than that, it's got a Windforce 2X cooling system, so it's got two fans up on top. Uh, the benefit you get from the increased size is that there's two huge uh, aluminum fin stacks in there with some copper heat pipes transferring heat from the GPU over to them. You also get a nice value add of a, a backplate on here, pretty clean looking design with the Gigabyte logo on it. It's also just all black uh, with just that white logo, so that's pretty nice. There are some orange accents on the shroud itself, um, which are pretty minimal, but um, if you're not building an orange system, chances are these will be facing down and won't really show too much. Or you know you could paint over them if you really wanted to go that route. As far as video outs, uh, they're pretty much standard for the 1063 display ports, one HDMI, one DVI-D. 
And then uh, they are introducing some RGB LEDs on this card. The Gigabyte logo lights up RGB. The Fan Stop logo also lights up with LED. Uh, and the Fan Stop logo, of course, will light up when the fans aren't spinning, which they'll do if the card is at idle. And then they start spinning up with the, when the card hits about 50 or 60 degrees Celsius. Oh yeah, and I also did some overclocking on this card first before I ran any of these benchmarks. So you're looking at some slightly juiced numbers. I tried to keep things reasonable. I ended up dropping about 100 points onto the GPU and about 450 points onto the memory. So the GPU under full load was running at about 2030 to 2050. Memory was at 4450. I figured this was a pretty reasonable overclock that most people should be able to hit, even if you're buying a base level $250 GTX 1060. Gigabyte has provided a bit of extra power for this card with an 8-pin PCI Express graphics connector rather than a 6-pin, and that's about all I have to say about this card physically. Let's see how it performs. All right, a little GTA 5. We are at 2560 by 1080, and uh, just just kind of roaming around in the open world, getting in the low 80s frame rate. I'm recording the screen directly with the camera because, as far as I know, 21 by 9 capture cards do not exist yet, and I'm using the overlay either with Precision X or with the built-in Vulcan overlay in Doom, so you guys can see the frame rates. And I've sort of blown that up and placed it in the bottom right corner, so you can guys you guys can get a better look at it. For settings, I'm using pretty much the same setup that I use for benchmarking, which is no FXAA, MSAA at by 2 uh, Pretty much all the sliders set to high, everything else set to very high in here. I do have one or two things set to off or soft on the soft shadows, and then uh, high on the ambient occlusion and tessellation. My good deed for the day. Save that poor woman's life. I gotta get some knockout gas here. You'll never catch me, coppers. <laughs> Actually, they were never in really close to me. One star is almost gone. Cop pops up out of nowhere. Scopes me. Suddenly I got the 5 0 on my tail like a bee's on a, on a, on a bear's ass. Frame rate's been doing good. Uh, originally I was in the mid to low 80s, and now it's uh, getting up over 100 from time to time. Good night, guess. That's everything we need. I'll put up word that the score is ready to go. Score is ready. Nice. All right, so verdict for GTA 5 2560 by 1080 is uh, between 80 to 100 frames per second, at least with the very high settings that I am using. Should be great for most monitors up to 100 hertz, and of course you can turn some settings down if you need to get a higher frame rate for 120 or 144. Ready to switch over, though, to... 3440 by 1440. Alright, so first glance at 3440 by 1440 is our uh, frame rate's a little bit lower than uh, we might find acceptable. It's in the mid 50s. So uh, I'm actually going to make a couple adjustments to some settings here and see if we can get up into a more acceptable range. Alright, so in order to improve the frame rate for 3440 by 1440, I have done the following. Uh, basically switched a couple things to high texture and shader qualities. Uh, also grass quality down to normal, since grass quality can definitely have a huge impact. That's just about it. Um, that got me a good 10 or 15 frames per second. Went from the mid 50s up to uh, the, well it's been about 70 to 80 depending on what I'm doing sometimes in the 60s of course All right, you got it so uh, with G-Sync this should be okay for me for now gotta make our get away get to the sewers this always reminds me of Terminator 2 for some reason
taking out the cops. Alright, so GTA 5, you've been at 3440 by 1440. 1060 still seems to be able to handle it pretty well. Just gotta adjust a few settings to get uh, well above 60 frames per second. Moving on to some Doom, starting off with 2560 by 1080. And I uh, got the frame rate counter going out there. Oh, geez. And I'm being attacked. I'm gonna try to do slightly better at Doom this time around. Oh, this is a big guy, isn't it? Danger. Anyway, point is, I'm getting, uh, shucks. 100, 100 frames per second, give or take. Up or down, plus or minus. Something after me, I hear noises. It's always scary when you hear noises. I also have no idea where I'm supposed to be going, really. Oh, Jesus! That scared the shit out of me. I don't like you. Okay, before we jump up to 3440 by 1440, I have just turned uh, the anti-aliasing mode to TSSAA, which I'm told is the mode that you're supposed to do in order to get the good, the good asynchronous compute stuff working. Feels clunkier for yeah. some reason. Oh, this is this looks wonderful. There's weird stuff going on with this TSSA thing. I for, yeah, it feels feels different. And my frame rate seems to have dipped a little bit. Oh, good. Okay. Hey, where'd you come from? People just popping up out of nowhere. I have a bunch of weapon points that I should probably use. And now let's go ahead and switch over to 3440 by 1440. Alright, frame rate has definitely dropped down. We got a lot of red showing up there. Because uh, we're down below 60 frames per second. Yeah, it's no good. So before I even get very far at all... Oh look, there's another one of these. Convenient. Anyway, before I get any very far at all, I'm going to switch up some of the settings. Well, we got TSSAA on, so we're using uh, asynchronous computes. or some of the asynchronous compute features that they have enabled here with the Vulkan. And then uh, other than that, we're set to high graphics qualities, the presets across the board. Let's kill some stuff. Nothing can go wrong. Fun. Demonic threat reduced by fifty percent. Oh, good. I like how it gives you the percentages. Four, three, two, one. Overwatch twenty five sixty by ten eighty. Ready for the 
So I'm noticing that the frame rate is uh, dropping and showing like 14 FPS at times. That seems to be a glitch. That's definitely not. Oh, get off me. <laughs> that was bad timing. But yeah, I'm getting. It's showing 14 frames per second at times. That's not actually happening. When it's at 100 or 95 or whatever in that range, that's what's actually. That's what I'm actually getting. Yay, we won! I was getting a very nice frame rate at 2560 by 1080, at least in the uh, 95 to 105 FPS range. Switching it up now to 3440 by 1440. The humans who live here are fools to trust the Omnix. They will see. We are in harmony. Alright, so just for starters here at 3440 by 1440, getting in the uh, mid, mid to upper 60s. Uh, again, the, you might see the counter dropping down to 13, 14 FPS. That is a glitch. It is actually not dropping that low of frame rate, I can tell. Okay, I'm still at 3440 by 1440, but I have switched from Epic to Ultra settings and uh, did the restart already. So I'm going to see what this does to my frame rate. Again, I do have a 100 hertz monitor, so if I can get closer to 100 uh, frames per second, that would be nice. Alright, so when the uh, FPS counter is working, it's uh, going between 90 and maybe 100 to 110 frames per second. I guess it's also dipping down to the 80s sometimes as well. Oh, I should be healing. Um, anyway though, definitely very nice and playable. And uh, again, that's an ultra. Just one step down from epic. So those are my tests guys, and I hope if you are looking at a 21 by nine monitor, this has helped you make a bit of a better decision. I think the GTX 1060 is a very viable option, especially at 2560 by 1080. If you're going 3440 by 1440, you might have to turn a few more settings down to get playable frame rates, especially if you're going in the plus 100 Hertz range. But overall, pretty impressed with the performance, and I think it's a great option. If you're going 3440 by 1440, might consider something a little bit higher end, like a GTX 1070, or maybe one of the uh, newer AMD cards, especially the newer ones that they're supposed to launch very soon, although I know nothing about those. But if you enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up button and let me know. Also down in the description, you can find links to stuff like my store, where you can buy shirts and mugs and pint glasses. And as always, thank you very much for watching my videos.